Do you believe in the value of human life? Do you believe in world peace as an ideal? Do you believe in justice and equality, universal education, the importance of family and social responsibility? What's crazy is that these are six things that actually most people of all religions and no religion can agree upon. Imagine that. It is these principles which ensure the longevity of society. And each of these ideas changed the fabric of mankind. But the question I want to ask is, where did they come from? Where did these values that we all agree upon come from? We are told that much of modern civilization stems from the Romans and the Greeks, who were undoubtedly innovators of much of what we know today. But did they propagate these key values? Historian Ken Spiro wrote a book exploring these issues called World Perfect. But for now, let's just touch on some of them to explore which culture these values were first derived from. Number one, the value of human life. Now, it cannot be argued that either Greece or Rome valued human life at all. Most ancient civilizations were known for practicing infanticide for population control. Sex selection or ridding society of deformed babies, for example, was common practice. Archaeologists in Ashkelon excavated ruins of Roman bathhouses, where they discovered remains of a hundred newborns. The clearest illustration of disregard for human life was the killing of people for entertainment. The Romans used women, children and blind people to be killed by the gladiators purely for the sake of sport and entertainment. Number two, world peace as an ideal. Today, peace is considered a major part of an ideal world. But in ancient societies like Rome, war and warriors were glorified and peace was only desirable once all one's neighbors had been subdued. According to Wallace Caldwell, Quote, the glorification of war, the glamour and glory of battle were subjects of the finest words and pictures. Number three, justice and equality. In ancient societies, one's wealth determined how the law treated them. In many, noblemen practiced a concept called droit de seigneur, or the right of the lord, where a lord would take a peasant's bride on her wedding night and have the legal right to rape her. Even in Greece, where democracy began, only a few thousand of the several hundred thousand people who populated Athens had the right to vote. Inequality of treatment was always endorsed in the name of, quote, justice. Number four, universal education. Historians write that the literacy rates in Greece and Rome were roughly between 10% to 15%. The ruling majority and those high up the aristocratic system were educated, but the focus of the average peasant was merely making the daily bread. Furthermore, education was not free because education empowers people and so it was kept away from the masses and the same was true in Europe for centuries. Number five, family values. The ancients were more obsessed with unrestrained sexuality than the family structure. The creation story of most religions began with the deities engaging in sexual activity and pederasty, a sexual relationship between an adult man and a boy, was quite common in antiquity. In fact, in Greek civilization, it was the highest form of love and Plato described it as, quote, the greatest blessing. Women were also always degraded. And finally, number six, social responsibility. If these ancient cultures showed disregard for the value of life or justice and equality, they certainly did not recognize the importance of social responsibility, taking care of all parts of society. There existed no concept of taking care for the weakest members of society. If you lived in poor social conditions, the government was not going to help you. The argument that I would like to present to you is that these six values were first articulated, were first derived from the Torah, from the Jewish people 3,000 years ago. Let's go through them quickly. Number one, the value of life. The principle of life having intrinsic value was first brought to the surface by Judaism in which the sanctity of life is among one of the most fundamental concepts. Human sacrifice, infanticide and killing for sport are all absolutely forbidden. The Torah permits nearly all the commandments to be violated in order to save a life. The Talmud says, quote, he who destroys a life it's as if he's destroyed an entire universe. This statement was made 2,000 years ago by the Talmudic sages, while the Romans were killing thousands of people for fun. Number two, peace. The vision of humanity living in peace, and that peace is an inherently higher level of existence than war, derives from the Torah. Jewish scriptures make statements, quote, the Torah was given to mankind in order to establish peace. 
and the only reason God created the world was, quote, so that there would be peace among creation. Outside the United Nations in Manhattan, they have a wall with a quote from Isaiah embodying the Jewish vision of world peace. Quote, nations shall not live sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Even the UN <laughs> recognises where this vision came from, where this vision was first articulated. Number three, justice and equality. The notion of equality before the law is a Jewish obsession. Ancient Israel was a sophisticated system of government with checks and balances and division of powers. The king was subject to the law and judges were held to account carefully. The requirement for a judge to act fairly without any bribery is clearly stated. Quote, you shall not respect the person of the poor nor honor the wealthy person, but in righteousness you shall judge your neighbor. Indeed, if you look at the four great political revolutions in the Enlightenment era, two of them ended in blood and tyranny, the Russian and French revolutions, and two of them led to liberal democracies, Britain and America. Two were grounded in atheism, and two were grounded in Judeo-Christian values. The while church and state should be separate, our rights are God-given, and thus cannot be removed by man. Number four, universal education. In the eyes of Judaism, education empowers us to achieve our potential. No city in the Jewish diaspora lacked a Jewish school. French medieval monk Peter Abelard wrote, quote, A Jew, however poor, even if he had ten sons, would put them all to letters. Not only his sons, but his daughters. Jewish literacy in the medieval era was over 90%, while throughout the rest of Christian Europe, it was under 10%. The Catholic Church even prevented the mass distribution of Bibles to prevent the masses from becoming educated and empowered. The first Jewish holiday, Passover, always emphasized the vital importance of educating your children to ensure the future. Number five, family values. A strong family is among the most crucial elements in the Jewish faith. The Torah teaches that each halves of a marriage are soulmates. In Jewish law, people are required to control themselves and to focus their sexual energy and emotional energy exclusively to their partner. And they're required to love and respect their partner. And if they don't, this can be grounds for divorce. When Judaism demanded that all sexual activity be channeled into marriage, it changed the world. And finally, number six, social responsibility. Everyone is responsible for society. That's the Jewish view. Judaism mandates that all people give to charity, visit the sick, care for animals, provide dignity for workers, and more. Thomas Huxley wrote, quote, The Bible has been the Magna Carta of the poor and oppressed. Down to modern times, no state has had a constitution which the interests of the people are so largely taken into account. I think it's because Jews believed in one God that they were able to lay down universal principles that would apply to all of humankind. It was the Hebrew Bible that was responsible for these six values becoming accepted through the world. Think about it. The majority of the world today accepts these principles of Abrahamic monotheism through either Islam or Christianity. As the historian Paul Johnson said, to them, the Jews, we owe the idea of equality before the law, of the sanctity of life and the dignity of the human person, of social responsibility, of peace as an abstract ideal, and love as the foundation of justice, and many other items which constitute the basic moral furniture of the human mind. Without the Jews, the world might have been a much emptier place. I'm Oli Anisfeld, and you're watching JTV. To stay up to date with the latest JTV content, if you're on YouTube, click subscribe below the video and the alarm bell. And if you're on Facebook, click the like button and under following, click see first.